And here we go, everybody. All right, we're just waiting for everybody to get online, and I'll be getting online here. And hey, everybody over on Facebook, good morning. And hey, everybody on YouTube, good morning to you. I hope everybody's having a wonderful weekend. Uh, I know sometimes with the lockdown, we can't tell uh, what day's the weekend. So we have to find a way to make our own rituals about that. I'm just enjoying a cup of coffee, and I hope everybody is as well. So if you're out there today with me, say hi, stop in and um, let me know. And uh, you can, uh, for those people that are just joining us, we're going to have a chat option coming up here in a minute where you're going to be able to just chat on screen and participate in our conversation. So today, uh, as we're having coffee, you know, what we're thinking about is um, your home routine. Every day we wake up, we go through a regular routine. That routine is filled with various products um that we have to choose from we don't always have the choices we want but there are choices that we always have to make and today's show is devoted to paying attention to some of those issues at home and little things that we can do because i truly believe that uh, we have the power and we can change the world through a revolution through our routine so it's our world let's talk about it Right, here we go. Who's here? Hey, Colleen is here today. Nice to see you. Hey, Colleen, thanks for joining. And uh, cafe, happy caffeine soup to you. <laughs> um, Colleen brought up the point that um, that it is beans and water. So uh, technically, it's soup. And i got to say, I agree 100%. <laughs> hey, Megan, thanks for joining today. Nice to see you on here. And, uh, you know, coffee is actually one of the things we're going to talk about today. You know, one of the revolutions through routine that we all talk about is coffee cups. What coffee cup are we using? I, I personally use a Yeti. Um, it's stainless steel, and stainless steel is um, means that it has a medical rating, which means that it is uh, there's no little nooks or crannies or crevices for uh, germs and things to latch onto. So it's very, very, very safe. Hey, Dan, 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 nice to see you. Daniel Roper Jones from Cambodia. Some of you that's watched the show before knows that I've, I've spoken a lot about um, the work that he does over in Cambodia to uh, save the wildlife. Um, a great, great, great advocate, great activist, and uh, somebody who's changing the world through his passion and hopefully we're going to be able to get him on the show to, you know it's hard to match up our schedules here um, but his sanctuary work is is the most amazing and daniel you brought up an amazing point the other day on facebook that it's hard to explain to people that for profit and conservation are generally at odds with each other and today's episode addresses that because basically what we choose and what we buy uh in a world that's very much a single-use world right now uh, will destroy the world around us. And we're going to talk about everything from your toothbrush to your toilet paper uh, when we bring that up. So, um, but today, you know what? I wanted to start with today's quote actually from Einstein. And it says, the world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. Um, I love that quote. And I think it's very important because the way that we approach the world previously is the opposite uh, we, we, all, we, all we've done is tur turned into a, a series of train wrecks. So we have to rethink the way that we are creating the world that we're thinking about around us. Hey, Captain Dave. Hey, everybody. Captain Dave on here, I see, from uh, Dominion Tug. Now, Captain Dave is um, works through restoration and education, trying to help children understand a better way towards the future by examining the past on the dominiontug.org. It's a great organization. They have one of the oldest uh, tugboats that is still around and uh, Captain Dave keeps it up and running and actually they're going to be starting a podcast soon. I'm going to be a guest on it so I'll be telling you guys more about that uh, in the weeks to come also. Um, now one thing about the quote that I did want to mention is um, <laughs> I love Einstein but this is a fascinating thing about our quote today. I found out that Yoda is based on Einstein. 
I didn't know. I don't know. Maybe you guys already knew that. I didn't know that. But it turns out the special effects artist and Star Wars makeup supervisor, Stuart Freeborn, said he modeled the character after a photo of Einstein that was hanging on an office wall. So there we go. That's pretty cool, huh? Um, <clears throat> anyway, I just wanted to, uh, to share that with everybody. Um, so let's just jump right into it. You know, Today is obviously going to revolve mostly around plastics. Now, revolution through routine, most of what we're talking about today, I have covered in previous podcasts in great depth. But today I kind of want to go back through because we really focus on revolution through routine. Um, you know, obviously turning off the lights when you're not there and everything is very important. But what I'm talking about is revolution through routine that causes financial pressure on these companies that just don't care. Uh, now, the majority of them use plastics because plastics are very cheap for them because they buy them in what are called nurdles, which are these little teeny, um, teeny, teeny uh, pellets that they can melt down into anything. Now, these nurdles are mostly created by and shipped out of the United States. Now, they don't take into account the cost of removing all these plastic toxins from the ecosystem so that's what keeps the plastic cost down if they had to pla if they had to factor in like okay you're also responsible for recycling this stuff and getting rid of it and paying for all the downstream effects of your plastic plastic would actually be very expensive so one thing we have to do is um <laughs> dirk says take albert over yoda any day <laughs> i agree dirk although i don't know dirk if you've seen the the mandalorian but um there's a baby yoda on there that is so cute um, but anyway, <laughs> good to see you on here, man. Um, so, you know, the issue we have to deal with is the plastic earth. And our idea of single-use plastics has gotten out of control. Now, a lot of times we get these videos and these images and we get this impression that somehow the Asian countries are to blame for it. Now, the reason that we're getting these images and these impressions is because us as, um, us as a culture we actually export most of our stuff and actually the majority of it goes to china and i just want to talk about that real fast i don't know if you guys know this but in 2018 china stopped accepting plastic from the whole international community who was sending it to them instead of recycling now we'll get into this in a minute but the reason they send it to china is for clothes if you wear polyester or unnatural fibers chances are you're wearing clothes that are made in china and we'll get into that in a minute it's actually plastic um, that comes from different countries. That's what polyester is. But since the ban, China has recycled 282 million tons of metal and plastic. Prior to the ban, they took in 12.6 billion pounds of the world's plastic waste every year. So in the year before the restrictions came into effect, the U.S., we exported 693 million metric tons of plastic waste instead of recycling it here. And you always see these things saying that recycling is not very effective in america we recycle something like seven to nine maybe twelve percent of our plastics here in the u.s and the rest actually got shipped out now we're in a bit of a trouble because they stopped taking it so we don't know what to do with it um into the 12 months before the restrictions came into effect oh yeah we already talked about that uh, germany also exported 390 million tons the uk sent two-thirds of its plastic waste to china so this is a worldwide problem japan topped the list globally exporting 842 million tons of plastic waste to china china at the time was happily buying it and recycling it for polyester use which they then sold back to places like walmart uh, in total imported plastic waste used to swell China's domestic waste figures by 10 to 13 percent. So that's pretty crazy. Um, and most of that did go into the oceans. So, uh, you know, it's, we have to remember that we have a worldwide problem. Um, and China actually is one of the most innovative countries, which I know it sounds very controversial right now. But we're in a period where we have to look outside of our borders for more solutions. One thing that China does is because they have a lot of money, they are actually the ones that are pro um, processing and creating polyester clothing. So the polyester clothing is, um, is, is just basically recycled plastic. Now, the biggest problem with that is that if you buy polyester and you do not buy natural fibers, now, of course, polyester is cheaper. So this is always the problem. Um, we go to Walmart, we buy polyester shirt. You don't think twice about it, but polyester is recycled plastic. 
So um, aside from all the obvious problems with that, when you're done using a polyester shirt, you think of it as a piece of clothing and not as a piece of plastic so it doesn't get recycled. So eventually that plastic, although it has been recycled once or twice, eventually will end up in our landfills, leaching into our soil and um, creating a lot of issues for us. So we have to always keep that in mind. So, hey, Vic, welcome back, man. Good to see you. Hey, Daniel, I'm glad to be here. Um, Yoda is way better. Oh my gosh, we've got a uh, we got a debate going on here between Yoda and Einstein. Uh, and for everybody that is wondering what debate we're talking about, this is the debate: Yoda versus Einstein. Um, two wise, um, although it's possible that um, Yoda was a little bit more zen about it. So, Vic, it's nice to see you on here, everybody. Vic is working uh, in so many different capacities to try to make change. Uh, Heather Lynn, nice to see you on here today, Heather. Heather's another great clean water activist um, that is involved in a lot of projects all around the states. Very impressive. And uh, it's a real honor to have you on here today because, you know, I know we've talked about how people can change things by changing their simple routines. Hey, Andrea, Andrea's coming in from Romania today. In Romania, we actually are going to talk about IKEA, which if you are buying IKEA furniture, you are unwillingly, unknowingly destroying um, some of the most important forests in all of Europe, which are located in Romania, which actually come from the Nazis in Harvard. It sounds like a crazy um, video, but it's actually true, all true. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Hey, Barbara, I'm glad to see you on here today. Hey, Heather, nice to see you on today. And yeah, this is so great. I mean, I got to say, guys, I look forward to this every week because everybody comes in, everybody has such great input. And please, if you have additional links for us to check out, information for us, ways that we can change the world without even leaving our apartments. Let us know because revolution through routine is critical. You know, we can only choose from what's out there. And the only way we can determine what's out there is by what we demand is out there from them. Um, I have told you guys, I often use a, a, an app called Bycott, B-U-I-C-O-T-T, that you can program in all of your different uh, ethics that you like to shop from. And Bicot will go through the scans, the UPC codes, and tell you if that matches up to your ethics. So you can live according to your personal philosophy, whatever that may be, because all of us have ways that we try to change the future for the better for the kids and the grandkids. And we all approach it a little differently. We don't have to have a unified approach, but we do have to be conscious and keep ourselves um you know, re-educated. It's time to re-educate. Hey, Camilla, thanks for coming in from the UK. Uh, discuss and unite we must. Yes, yeah, said with your voice. Fantastic. Oh, I should have read that first. I could have done it better. Um, oh, Barbara, no, I, I appreciate that. I tell you this. Thanks, Vic. I appreciate you putting that up. Everybody, that, I'm telling you, Bicot's awesome. It's free. I, they haven't given me anything. I don't work for them. I don't even... They probably would be upset if they knew I was talking so much about them, but they've changed the way that I shop. It's very helpful in a very confusing world where often cause and effect are so removed because PR companies chop through and uh, and mess it up. So uh, Dirk says boycott. Yes, uh, boycott. Um, yeah, exactly. And remember, your dollar makes all the difference. So what I want to do is talk to you guys about just basic stuff we all do every day that we can make changes. And obviously, when you wake up in the morning, first thing you do is brush your teeth. Problem is, most of these toothbrushes are plastic. And over a billion toothbrushes are thrown away annually just in the United States, which creates 50 million pounds of waste. And that's plastic waste, which is not going anywhere. Um, I, You know, it doesn't matter what brand, but bamboo is actually a very re, uh, sustainable and um, sustainable resource and there's a lot of great toothbrushes made out of bamboo i personally use one it's bamboo with a little bit of charcoal on there um, oh barbara bicot you can go to bicot.com and you, you can go onto the website or you can just go on your phone and go through your store uh, if you're on android go to your marketplace um, if you're on iphone just go into your app store and look up bicot and you can download it and the beauty of that is that like what I do is when I take my phone shopping, um, I'll just do a quick scan on the barcode and take a look and make sure that I'm not buying something that um, worries me. Uh, Vic says yes. So, and uh, guys, I'm, I'm, I've been talking about it. I've been a little lazy. I have to do a video on Bicot. Anyway, um, bamboo toothbrushes. And bamboo, remember, bamboo is, is the reason it is 
a good resource for all of us to use is that they can grow and manage the growth of bamboo where they're not like chopping down bamboo forests. They're continually growing in a sustainable way bamboo areas that can then be regrown. So it's sustainable. It takes the pressure and the bend off of uh, allowing these companies to continue to buy all these plastic nurdles. And it takes the pressure off of us of continually feeling bad that every time we throw away a toothbrush, uh, we know that it will survive forever. When I was on an island in Cambodia, uh, in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> with 12 people, um, they showed us this incredible array of toothbrushes that they had actually found that just wash up on, on the shore. So they might go into your landfill, they might go into recycling, doesn't matter. They're going to end up in the ocean and they're going to end up on somebody else's shore and they're going to end up killing some wildlife. So it's something important and it's something small that we can all do that makes a huge difference. Okay, now uh, once we do our toothbrush, what I'd like to talk about next are obviously coffee. Now some people use K-cups. I would just, I mean, I don't even think we have to really broach this. The concept of single-use plastic K-cups is the most destructive concept that we have. And currently, uh, there are over 75 million homes brewing single-use pods. Now, just imagine if they have more than one um, family member. So that's, that's 75 million homes a day. Uh, how many cups of coffee are being made in that house? And that's how many K-cups are being used. Um, so this is the share of U.S. consumers that own the K-cup system. And you can see that it's gone huge amount. Uh, this is extremely destructive. And it's not just destructive because we understand single-use plastic is bad for us. But there are multiple aspects to this. Um, so you guys can take a look at this. I'll put this up as well in there so we can all take a look. But the K-Cups do have an aluminum top. Now, um, aluminum has a lot of toxic uh, prior um, toxic um, properties to it. So it's not something that we really want to always be in touch with. And this is industrial grade aluminum. This is just standard packaging aluminum. It's not good for that. Even Alzheimer's, yeah. So it, it can really have issues. Um, plus, then we have the carcinogens. Uh, like styrene show up in Kerrig special blend. Look at that. So if you guys are using a Kerrig, uh, just know that car possible carcinogens like styrene have already been tested and shown to come out. Uh, and and this is just makes sense. Heating up plastic and ingesting any chemicals come from it can put you at risk. And we're going to talk about we live in a plastic world and it's very toxic. Everybody, it's very dangerous. Um, pod machines are a prime growing environment for mold. Most people don't clean their Kerrigs. That's kind of gross. So it's just the way that it is. Um, so if you have a Keurig or you use a Keurig at work or you have a single use, I used to work at GoDaddy. They had a single use Keurig machine in the office and I ended up getting a small petition together to ask them to change back to a regular coffee machine because although the K-Cups were easier for them, um, the amount of destruction being caused on an average shift is just beyond comprehension. So those are pretty obvious. Now, of course, the other side of the K-Cups is going to the bathroom. <laughs> now, we talked about this last week, but toilet paper is a major, major contributor of deforestation. Now, uh, recently, the National Resource Defense Council, and again, this isn't another podcast in, in, in full, but what I want to bring up is a very simple guide for this. Um, toilet paper generally comes from trees. Now, um, when you look at columns D and F, these are their reports. These are their grades. Now, if you'll notice, everything in D and F basically says soft. Trader Joe's super soft. Quilted Northern soft. Uh, Charmin, ultra soft. Sustainably soft. Well, that's BS. Um, soft, when it creates the soft title, it's because it comes from virgin pulp, which means fresh wood. And it's a little bit softer and a little bit more pliable. Now, the other thing with this scorecard is the ones in the DNF also use standardized bleaching, which contains dioxins, which not only get into your bloodstream, but when you flush it into the toilet, it goes into the water stream, releasing dioxins into your local water supply. Now, the toilet paper from A and B, these are ones that were rated to not have those. And you'll notice the word soft is not there. So 
Soft, again, comes from virgin pulp, which means deforestation. Mostly currently, that deforestation is happening in Canada. And it's actually happening called the boreal forest, which is uh, um, more of a, uh, if you think of it in a, in a map uh, or a globe, it's in, it's in one um, latitude around the world. Um, all around the northern area. So it's Canada, it's Russia, it's, it's a lot of these forests. Um, so that is a major thing. Okay, guys? So just remember that uh, when you're buying toilet paper, recycled means minimal bleaching and no dioxins. So um, that's one good way to do that. You know. Say, eggs <laughs> for life. See? Exactly. That's another thing. When we were in... Um, when I was in Asia, there wasn't really even toilet paper. It was fantastic. It was more of a bidet setup. And uh, a lot to be said for that. A lot cleaner. Anyway, uh, Angel Soft is owned by Koch Brothers, Sherry. Good point, Sherry. And that's another thing. Um, you guys can always Google and look up uh, Koch Brothers owns what companies. And that's another thing. And that's something in Bicot that you can actually say that you don't want to buy anything from Koch Brothers Industries. And it'll, it'll warn you because they have so many divisions and subdivisions. And the last thing we do want to do is give those guys more money because they take that money and destroy all the world around us. Um, they're very, very destructive force. So we want to avoid that. Now, some other really simple things. I bet you guys aren't aware that your laundry actually has a huge effect on the ocean. Um, did you know that every time that you wash uh, little teeny microfibers, come through your laundry machine and get rinsed out into the um, into the water supply. And we're going to talk a little bit about more, well, I almost said that Canadian. Uh, hats off to my Canadian friends. So um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about right now is the fact that it comes through your laundry. So you can actually buy a filter. Uh, you can Google it and you can buy a microplastic filter. And the microplastic filters will pull out all this stuff. So check this out. These are the estimated fibers released from the washes. Acrylic, and again, polyester, which is, as we know, recycled plastic. But it's not called plastic anymore. Um, now, the polyester cotton blend, way, way reduced numbers. It still goes out there, but it is still a very uh, effective way to help out. Now, once it gets through the wash, I, this is a nice thing here because... There's different size of plastics that get into the water supply. But if you guys will notice, no matter what size it is, if it's the smallest amount, the bacteria grab onto it. And then that bacteria gets eaten by the fish. And then the fish get eaten by bigger fish that get eaten by birds and then turtles and then mammals. Um, and then often humans will eat the fish or it's the turtles or the birds uh, or the benthic predators like um, crabs, uh, benthic being seafloor so we've got all these different because uh, it'll go into the sediment as well so the microplastics regardless of the size that they fall into these are the different sizes that have been found inside of uh, every person and every animal and they, they've recently done tests and found microfibers inside of everybody so just keep this in mind and another thing to think about is each piece of microplastic is toxic to all life to all of us and the problem is is what's called biomagnification so when the smaller fish gets eaten by the bigger fish the toxic level of that piece of microplastic um, exponentially grows so I'm not smart enough to know how exponentially it grows <laughs> I'm sure somebody out there can help us with that if anybody is familiar with the biomagnification um, Thing, but it's a chain so it always comes back to us and this is the thing we always talk about it we have to save us and we have to save the environment we're interconnected so we, in order to save the environment we have to save people and in order to save people we have to save the environment one place where all of that comes together is inside the mall inside of your shopping because it's kind of the only place where you're interacting with the entire world and it's where you have that power to change the entire world without leaving your apartment. Revolution through routine. Huge fan of this. Um, yoga pants have a crap ton of microplastics. Correct, Vic. Absolutely. Um, it's a major issue. Another one that I wanted to bring up is PVC. Uh, PVC is actually one of the most toxic 
um, releasing of microplastics that there is. And it turns out that adults eat about 50,000 microplastic particles a year. Children are at 40,000. They're not far behind us. Now, you guys, I'm sure have heard of BPAs. BPAs leach from the PVC microplastics. Um, so if, now this is what's crazy to me, is for a long time, our piping in our homes were lead, and they discovered that lead piping was bad. So now our piping is PVC. A PVC, we're learning, when chipped, creates microplastics that are super toxic and filled with BPA. So um, do not put PVC, if you have the option, anywhere. Um, don't let it near your waters. Uh, that goes for every type of, of product, whether you're creating a filter for your backyard pond, um, you're creating an artificial reef, you are working on um, you know, new, uh, new piping for your housing. There's got to be good ways, but remember, you can't always prevent microplastics from chipping off PVC pipes. And PVC pipes are actually some of the most toxic plastics out there. They've been sold as very safe. No one's ever questioned it. Something we have to consider. Hey, Bruce, how are you, man? It's nice to see you on here today. And actually, Bruce is the reason that we're having this conversation today. Because, you know, Bruce was saying, hey, we're all stuck at home. You know, we're all here. Uh, our home life, our day-to-day -day life has never been, you know, more important. And maybe we can talk about positive ways to make changes while being here in the house. Hey, Michelle, thanks for joining us from Florida. And I hope you're staying well and staying um, healthy and safe uh, out there. Uh, you know, on the front lines these days. So I appreciate that. Uh, so we're talking today, everybody, about ways that we can change the world by our revolution through routine. So we've already talked about some incredible stuff. You know, if you can, look, it's about $80 or $100. It's, I know it's expensive, but if, you have, if you're doing well enough that you have a washing machine in your house, buy that filter, please. <laughs> you know, uh, people like me, I have to go to the laundromat. So, you know, I'm contributing to the microplastic problem. I can't do anything about that until I'm able to buy um, a, a thing. And then I can do what I can do, which is to buy that filter. And there's a few companies that have those filters. Um, check them out. And if you guys want, I'll, I'll throw some links on it as well at the end of the thing. So if you can stop those microplastics from going out, prevent people from, from adding more plastic into the water. Remember the microplastics are toxic. And remember that from the bacteria to the people, it biomagnifies intensely. So by the time it hits us, we are in trouble. Uh, Sherry says, we can only change the world if we start at home. And that's very true, Sherry, it's very true. I agree. And you know, the thing is, is, is people often think about um, boycotting as like this big event, but what we need to do is we need to just put pressure on better solutions from the companies. The thing is that we're never going to ask, these companies are never going to act properly unless we demand it. And this is the problem we have right now. Um, all these companies are basically allowed to do whatever they want. And supposedly the idea was that the free market would weed out what works and what doesn't according to our morals. Now, we've seen so many bailouts, we know that that doesn't work. So the market doesn't even work. Like They always get bailed out. So what we need to do is pressure Coca-Cola, pressure all these companies into doing what we demand, which is going back to less toxic life. And that's really what we're talking about. We're just talking about reducing our toxicity in our house. If you get rid of K-cups, you're not only saving yourself every day, you're saving the nature around you. If you stop using that toilet paper that we talked about that has all soft or comes from virgin pulp or is extra white or extra fluffy or whatever, um, you're not only saving your own body because of the dioxins, but you're saving the forest. Like, see, everything is dual. And, and everything that we do positive for ourselves, we do positive for the world around us and vice versa. The kinder we are to our world and the more thoughtful we are about our world, the kinder we are to our own bodies. And they are correlated. Um, no company is out there making something you know, um, that they, you know, because they really care about us. You know, we have to remember that. Most companies are there to make money and they owe a lot to their, to their shareholders, stockholders, that's their job. Our job is to demand somewhere between their profits and the destruction of the earth, we need to find a happy medium. And in the current world where the EPA has been shut down, uh, the FDA has basically been shut down, 
Smithfield Foods is still operating. My friends that are eating meat, be careful. Um, I don't know much about it, but I do know that um, there are no inspections currently. And um, I know there's a lot of uh, foodborne illnesses happening at the moment. And um, so, you know, please be careful out there. So we have to remember that. That's another uh, aspect of treating our bodies and our, our health properly, treats our world properly. You know, we have to find a way, um, as you know, as, as, as the quote earlier said, and I'd like to go back to it. I don't usually go back to these, but I would like to go back to this for a second. Um, you know, when Einstein did say the world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. And that's exactly what's great about right now is that we find new ways, we can make changes, and we can, just by changing the way we think and, and helping our kids see a different approach to life, uh, makes a big difference. Look, when I was a kid, I never once thought about a toothbrush. I don't think people really did until we were able to see the consequences of what was happening. And so we're more educated now than we were 20 years ago. Um, and we know what our, what our single use toxic life is doing to the world around us. And it's obviously not sustainable. I mean, you know, that's something we can all agree on. And, you know, right now we have this wonderful opportunity with the elections coming up, regardless of which side that you're on, just know that, um, Please do not look at the environmental issues through the lens of your political party, but judge your politicians by their environmental record. Um, you can go to, there's a website called the uh, League of Conservation Voters that will show you every single politician on every side of the aisle, whatever side that may be, and how they have voted for environmental things. So check it out. Go to opensecrets.org. These are all handles. You know, we have the most amazing world right now because we can go look up information. And some of this information hasn't become biased yet. It's still just databases. So you can go to the, the League of Conservation Voters and find an unbiased approach on who's voting what. Go to opensecrets.org. You will find an unbiased approach of all parties, all politicians, and who their contributors are and investors are. Because remember, Politicians can be helpful if they listen to us, but the question is, who owns them? And OpenSecrets.org will answer that question. It's not a secret, actually. You can find out. You know, so many people are surprised that their politicians vote against this or that, and uh, you would know that if you just looked at how they got there. Just, it's a very simple thing. We need to do these things. Uh, Vic says, support B corporations, B corps. Fascinating. Thank you, Vic. I'm not even really familiar with that. So uh, there's another wonderful moment for learning on that. So uh, let's check out some B Corps because, you know, we need to find this this happy medium because the way it worked is not working now. Every every moment is like a destruction, you know, whether the, the economy is tanking or people are getting sick or, you know, this problem or that problem. We're not, this isn't like... Woo! You know we're not we're not there. We have a lot of work to do. We all know that. Now I know this this one's very touchy, but my friends, uh, if you have to wear contact lenses, please find solutions. The number one request is please do not flush them down the toilet. Please do not flush them down the toilet. This is the most destructive thing you can do. If at all possible, don't buy them. Um, some people need them, and I'm not going to ask people to sacrifice how their lives are. Uh, if you can get away without wearing them, please get away without wearing them. Uh, one out of five contact users dispose of their lenses down the drain. So look at these numbers on here. It's incredible. Um, six to ten million metric tons of plastic lenses end up in the water, which leach microplastics and toxins. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a good way to take care of them. You can throw them away. And look, I understand because I used to wear them. So, um, but we can't let them end up in our oceans anymore, friends. Again, around 14 billion contact lenses are thrown away, amounting to over 400,000 pounds or 200,000 kilograms of plastic waste every year, which that's crazy. So just, you know, remember that and, uh, and, and, and see what, you know, see, see what you can do. Um, you know, it's something that I was never conscious of. My first time that I went on a conservation trip, I was in Peru 
and I had just landed and I was very excited because I was going to be doing some frontline uh, activism um, that was bordering on, uh, you know, questionable if it was legal or not. So uh, one of the things I wanted to do was have contacts in so that I didn't have glasses on so that I'd be more effective as a field operative. Well, I opened up my bag and everybody that was on my team saw my contacts and went, no, what are you doing? And I just, it never crossed my mind that that simple activity of my day to day was causing this, this issue. I wear them when I surf uh, and, and, and then that was it. And you know what, when you wear them when you surf, most of the time you fall and the salt water pulls them out. So you get five, 10 minutes of them in. Um, now I just wear my glasses and uh, then I, that's it, you know, and glasses are tricky anyway um, because gl most glasses are made out of plastic. But the good news is with glasses, you can recycle them and a lot of people will take the frames, refit them with uh, lenses like a lot of NGOs and a lot of groups and then give them to other cultures and other places that are lacking in resource. So although we can't control plastic glasses um, and we can recycle them, but yeah, sorry, I know the contacts is very touchy. A lot of my friends are conservationists up to the contacts. <laughs> uh, please don't be upset with me. Uh, she'll say, I, mean, I was guilty of contact lenses problem until someone educated me. We should all post that info on our Facebook page to share. Yes, I appreciate that because honestly, the contact lens is just... Again, I would have never, ever even thought about it. So I'm, I'm in the same boat as everybody. I mean, here's the thing is we're so wrapped up in being busy uh, and it's very natural for us to perceive. Because look, you're taught that the, the power of money is that you can buy things and you can create everything the way that it fits best for your lifestyle. And that is true. Um, we're just asking that you be, be conscious of it. And I honestly, I never would have known about contacts. And, and unless that whole group skewer, you know, just skewered me right there for what I did. So, um, you know, that's the thing is a lot of us are conscious and a lot of us do our best every day. And then there's all these little hidden surprise things. So I'm just sharing with you guys stuff that I've learned um, by honestly being somebody that was using all those things before and, and having to rethink every little thing in my life. Um, I do, you know, none of us are born this way. And unless we grew up with really interesting probably you know communal hippie parents we're probably not going to be thinking about this stuff every day we think about it maybe on earth day and then we you know then we go buy a starbucks coffee uh, you know now we take our mug by the way if you take in your recyclable mug to not recyclable reusable mug mostly most of these places will give you discounts so uh, if you're broke and a conservationist which i think kind of most of us those, those are sort of synonyms it's a good deal all around it's a good deal uh sherry says flint has a company that makes glasses from water bottles recycle that's beautiful it's the best thing we can do it's the best thing we can do it's why you know although i'm not a fan of of tupperware uh i prefer people buy that over saran wrap you know i mean i know it's not as convenient um but again this is the thing where do we draw that line and this everybody has a different approach and everybody has a different ability it's not like Convenience, if somebody uses an item of convenience, they're being lazy. Some people need these items of convenience. For example, straws. But my my solution, I use a bamboo straw. And for I know people that are in wheelchairs that aren't that you know are paralyzed from the neck down, they use silicone bendy straws instead of plastic bendy straws. So it's a simple modification. Silicone again is not a perfect solution, but it's a better solution than a throwaway plastic straw. And again, here's my, this is, I actually got this in Cambodia. I love this straw, bamboo. Um, that was my knock on wood moment. <laughs> Camilla put up something for us here. So visualizing the scale of plastic bottle waste against major landmarks. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, Camilla. Beautiful, beautiful link. That sounds like a wonderful uh, composition, a comparison. I love that. Um, fantastic, Camilla. Thank you for putting that up. Uh, Matthew, hey, Matthew, thanks for joining today. And he says, uh, right now, a lot of places won't let you use your own mug because of COVID. That's fascinating. That is fascinating. I, I tell you what, Matthew, I have actually not been out to get coffee in a while. <laughs> so I didn't even know that. Uh, thank you for updating us on that. That is a very interesting 
approach, you would think that uh, they would rather wear like a rubber glove, hand you your mug, put your mug under the spout, and hand your mug back. Um, but instead now, uh, we'll see here's a downside of what's happening right now. That is a lot of plastic that is being put out. Um, Starbucks, coffee bean and tea leaf, these are the major, major polluters that we have in the world. And those stupid little plastic things they put in your coffee, they give it to you in your coffee, like somehow your coffee is going to get cold in the four seconds that they're handing you your coffee mug. It's ridiculous, stupid. Please never accept those. Please refuse them. I see them going to grab them sometimes for my friends. And I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't use those. Don't use those. The same as plastic bags in grocery stores. You guys don't really need those. Uh, I know people are very concerned right now with COVID. It's not a reason to uh, multiply our plastic, single plastic, than it is on a bag. And so even if it's already on the fruit, you're putting it inside the bag. Doesn't help you not get it on others. It's just, you know, it's it's too much waste. Um, oh, Matthew, okay, you're in New York. Uh, nice, Matthew. I love New York. Um, I spent a lot of time. I went to college there. I loved it. Uh, I was in the East Village for a long time, uh, up by the UN for a while, and uh, Catskills and some areas around... Um, White Plains in that area. Beautiful, beautiful area. I uh, hope you guys are doing well up there. And, um, you know, I really, uh, yeah, hope, hope I know that the um, there's been a lot of uh, stress on the medical community up there. So hopefully things are going better. So uh, let's talk now also, guys, about a few more solutions that we can do. Now, we talked about the toilet paper. We talked about coffee. Uh, but we need to talk about furniture, too. So... Again, there's a full podcast on this that I have uh, that's from Romania. I believe it's episode 17. If you want to learn more about these topics, please feel free to go back. They, we go into at length at all of these topics in previous podcasts. But if you're buying furniture, right now is a wonderful... We have this kind of like almost... It's kind of interesting because we had all these individuals that started to buy from worldwide companies. Now we're starting to have a worldwide movement where everybody wants to go back and buy from artisan individuals. This includes farmers markets, but we need to extend this to other people that have crafts. And I think one of the most important ones is furniture. Uh, multiple reasons. You know, now some people will say, well, Eric, how can you support, you know, a craftsman that goes and cuts down trees and, and, and builds furniture from them? Because their damage uh, that they would do is, is negligible. Um, what one person could do with an entire tree is amazing, whereas a company like IKEA is busy destroying all of the forests in Europe as we know them. Now, um, you might be thinking, what are you talking about? So <clears throat> let's go. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, IKEA was actually founded in 1943 in Sweden by a former member of the Nazi party. Now, why this is important is because this person was able to continue to make payoffs to the secret police in Romania during the communist era in order to secure a lot of these fields and a lot of these areas. Um, anyway, uh, they and, and it's actually on record that IKEA made these payments. So uh, we don't know the situation there currently with the new politi politicians and politics around, but we do know that illegal logging is destroying all of Romania's forests, and Romania has two-thirds, two-thirds of old-growth forest in Europe. It's the, the last two-thirds of it, and it's being destroyed by IKEA because people want cheap drawers. And I understand because, again, I do not make too much money at all working in conservation. If any, I usually have to pay to, to be involved. So, um, you know, I, I'm usually looking for IKEA stuff on Craigslist. You know what I mean? But I have to stop this because I am destroying the forest. And I, I recognize my responsibility in that part. So IKEA is, um, so the value of the ready-to-assemble furniture market is $12 billion. So you can just imagine the size of this. Now, Harvard actually owned most of the Romanian forest, which I was surprised to learn. Um, and then... Uh, they they sold it to IKEA in 25th of the government transitioned over there. So the government over there, I believe, is trying very hard to find a way to do this. And they're actually working with Greenpeace right now to invent a new system to better demarcate the logging. Um, anyway, IKEA paid more than 
uh, 62.6 million. Um, yeah, an acre, which is insane. $73 an acre for the forest that Harvard owned. Now Ikea owns it. So uh, they're all around the country. Let me show you a, a small grouping of these of these forests and you can kind of get an idea here um, this is how much forest land they have that's how much land that Harvard owned that they sold to IKEA now here's where the problem sets in these are not renewable usable forests what old forest growth means is that here let's come back together here for a second so old forest growth means that you've got these really old trees that are there now the system in Romania is, it's a little complex, but it basically goes like this. Um, the loggers go out and they tag the trees. Uh, then the guys go out that inspect it and say, looks good. Then the loggers are moving the trees and accidentally damage a good tree that's really old and gigantic. Now they can use it because it's not pristine cult quote-unquote pristine forest they're not allowed to touch pristine forest so their goal is to go in so they go into say like a one mile radius and they actually log every tree in there when they only have permission to log about a third of them and about a third of them are dead and decaying trees they're allowed to take those trees that have fallen over trees that are useless to the ecosystem they are not allowed to take old growth forest and again that's two thirds of the old growth forest in Europe. All of Europe is resting in those forests I just showed you. So what does that mean? That means the destruction of the endangered brown bear. That means the destruction of multiple animals. It means the changing of our climate because the boreal forest and the forests, all the forests there. What's amazing about these Carpathian mountains is they have so many different types of biological diversity. Uh, as a matter of fact, right where they meet the ocean is one of the most biologically diverse areas in the world. And IKEA is destroying it legally, through illegal means, through a very questionable law uh, that Greenpeace is fighting to change right now. So, <coughs> excuse me, so there's a lot going on there. But until we find a way to sustainably know for a fact, now IKEA does say, and in their defense, they say, listen, we go through the, um, the FSC, the Forestry Committee, right? Um, so this is supposed to be the Forest Sustainability Council. Now, the FSC has a lot of problems in it. Actually, Greenpeace left the FSC. The FSC logo, and we go over it again in the previous, pod, previous podcast, is not as strict as you would hope it would be. So it does not mean that if there's an FSC logo on it, that the forests have been protected. So uh, the FSC rating on IKEA, it does not mean anything. I'm sorry to say. So, friends, uh, if you have the ability to not buy from a big company like IKEA, but go back to a local craftsman, or even go find a used, actual, made out of wood, real dresser, um, if you can, try to buy it. You know, maybe we're entering a new realm now where accumulation is not as important. Uh, you know, my mom used to always say that if you buy nicer things, they'll last longer. And that's part of sustainability as well. You know, uh, and th that goes through everything. So, you know, and, and I'd love to hear what you guys have to say as well on how you have tips and tricks that you use at home in order to be more sustainable. Because there are so many different aspects. And you know what I started realizing the other day? How crazy is a mall, right? Like when you think of a mall, I, I remember going to the mall and trying to, you know, look, look for other roaming, you know, gangs of teenagers and try to meet girls and go shopping, window shopping mostly because when you're a kid, you don't have a lot of money and, you know, but the mall is, itself is, is like a giant um, tomb for the earth, quite honestly, you know, between all the polyester coming in through Walmart, not to mention there's a lot of the other stuff going on there, Ikea, you know, all these big box stores have these major issues. And this is the thing is what's the price for um, what's the price for convenience? We, we've already conceptualized convenience through single use life. And a lot of us know that doesn't work now. So we know that we have to we have to remove that from our concept. I really try to join in different ways. And, you know, it's 
it's even more incumbent than ever upon us because the people that supposedly were in charge and t looking out for us have shut their doors. So we have to look out for us now. And the only way we can do that is to demand these companies make our changes. And they will. This is the beauty of it is, you know, I mean, they're just a company. They're just a company. They, they could disappear tomorrow uh, if everyone just stopped buying their stuff. It's, it's, we've seen this. You know, we have the power. They don't want us to admit it, but, but they do have it. Uh, Bruce says, I always buy my furniture secondhand. Bruce, that is the best way to go. I love that. You know, they always say, reduce, reuse, recycle. And um, I know a lot of other people here have talked about get clothes secondhand, get your furniture secondhand. Uh, it's fantastic. And you know what? If furniture is good enough to be around secondhand, that's good furniture. You know, you're not going to find Ikea secondhand because most of the time you build the drawers and then they break because the particle board's this thin. And what is particle board? Particle board is compressed pieces of illegal logging. How messed up is that? You know, um, I mean, people were shocked when they saw the pink slime that makes burgers at like McDonald's. Guys, Ikea furniture is the pink slime of furniture. It's just, what are you buying? You know, you're buying the death of the environment. Particle board's very bad news. Um, and I agree, Matthew, we should all be minimalist. Fantastic point. You know, um, one thing that really changed for me was when I was going through my cancer, uh, I hadn't really expanded and done all the conservation, all the traveling I'd wanted to do. And my entire life uh, was too centered around accumulation. And I realized that the key to becoming happy was to simplify in every level. Simplify the things around me. Simplify my thoughts. Simplify my perspectives. Simplify and observe. And for me, that really worked tremendously. And I think that simplifying is the way to go. Um, you know, and one way we can do that is by remembering that we are, as they always say, you know, it's not ego where the human is the top of the food chain, but it's actually eco, which is a circle. And we're in, in part of it. We're not even in the middle of it. You know, we're, we're part of this. Um, and I think a lot of people now are on this huge conscious changeover to live in that direction. And that's why we've seen these huge upswellings of, of, of rising up around multiple issues, whether it's deforestation, it's climate change, it's, it's pollution that are giving children cancer, it's pollution that's giving other people chronic illnesses. We've all risen up because, again, as Einstein said in the beginning of this, you know, we need to change the way that we're, to paraphrase, and we need to change the way we're thinking in order if we're going to change the way that we're approaching. So it comes back to re-education, which is why I love these conversations with you guys, because we see the most amazing ideas here. Everybody comes with their own experience, and I, I love that. Um, you know, and, and so it, we can learn from each other, and that's the thing. Like I always say, we're an a giant encyclopedia set, all of us. And that's why conversation is so important. Don't let all of this heated, po politicized BS get to you guys. Remember that... Most of the memes you read, most of the things you see come from PR companies. They come from think tanks. They come from places that are designed to boil your blood and separate you. And the only way these companies can continue this sort of company ruling, I mean, multinationals rule the governments in many ways also. And let's not forget that. The only way we can really have this power is if we recognize that and we we make a change and we look directly at them. So um, let's see, Camilla says, Ikea, uh, the pink slime of furniture. Yes, exactly. Uh, the companies that have to heavily advertise are the pink slimes of everything. And that's another great point, Camilla. The more a company spends their time trying to convince you that, that they made your world better, um, they're the ones that are ruining it. One of my favorites was when I was a kid, I remember all the commercials for plastic. And the biggest commercial was a ketchup bottle and the kid holds the ketchup bottle and it drops and it shatters everywhere. And then they show one dropping it with plastic and it bounces. And, and that is how it appeals to, let's make consumerism about me, me, me. But we have a new consumerism these days. We're a new consumer. You know, our consumerism changes all the time. There are PR agencies that nobody can name that affect how we think about shopping every day. Every company has a PR agency. 
Most politicians have PR agencies, but yeah, we don't know the names of them. So these are invisible strings that are continuously pulling our wants and desires, making us feel that we're the remote control, right, through the cable of economy. And it's not that way. Um, it's just not that way. You know, we have to do this responsibly. And I think we're all learning the more we, we can do this, the, the way we, more we can make a change, like eco Roombas, you know, we are revolution through routine. That's us. Uh, Coral Lee says the best thing to come out of COVID is that the world is rejuvenating and we're learning to be minimalists. Absolutely. Totally agree. Um, just like uh, Sherry says, up art, you know, recreate. Exactly. This is the thing is, is we're starting to look at what we have. Um, until recently in our history, the concept that humans had was that every resource was not only ours for the taking, but it was uh, you know, it was um, inf infinite, infinite, infinite. Oh, gosh, I saw my mom made a, a comment and I missed it. Um, infinite, infinite, infinite. But now we actually know that that's, that's not true. So we have to really rethink that, you know. Um, we've learned a lot in the last 400 years. There's no reason <laughs> we should be continuing forward as a whole, and this means every single country in the world, based on 400 years ago presumptions. I mean, nothing else has made it. Now, obviously, the only reason this happens is because it's all about money. And these companies are the ones that run the world. One great example is rubber. I mean, look at all the rubber and the deforestation in the Amazon. And although there are so many synthetic rubbers, you can't use synthetic rubber on an airplane so we got a whole issue there we have to figure out. And this is the thing. So we do need rubber for, for airplanes. You know, it would be a bad move to, to move them. The only thing that can naturally expand and contract that much with going up into the air and contracting and then coming back down and heating up when they hit the, it's the only known material that can handle its pure rubber. So why don't we just restrict it? You know, why, why are we more restrictive about our resources? This is what I always wonder. I mean, gold's expensive, fine wine's expensive. Shouldn't plastic nurdles be expensive for Coca-Cola? I believe they should. Um, when I say we should ban plastic, everybody says, well, you know, we're gonna need rubber gloves for, uh, well, of course we are for doctors, nurses, people that are doing home care. I know that from personal experience. I'm not saying we gotta get rid of all of them. It's not an all, game thing but we need to be restrictive you know look at the masks right now they're, they're even saying look guys uh we need them for our professionals we don't need we don't even have enough for our professionals the supply demand thing failed another example of how the free market's a, a wingding sort of philosophy um so here we are so they're like please if you don't need them just make your own at home and give let our professionals have them so you know, once again, maybe this is a new time to look at being restrictive on destructive elements. You know, does PVC need to be everything? Do people need to be putting PVC in everything? You know, uh, making it out of everything? You know, when you cut PVC pipe and you bring it back and you put it into your pond, your water, your backyard, your whatever, that's leaching microplastics. There's nothing on there sealing in that cut. So, um, you know, just... Be, we have to be cautious because the world has become so toxic that it is up to us to detoxify. And we need to do it mentally, spiritually, physically, and our surroundings, you know, which eventually help us emotionally, I think, as well. And, you know, it's very toxic. Like I said, right now we have a polarized country. That's toxic. That's toxic. That's a destruction of conversation. And like we always learn in these, in these podcasts, I think that at least... You know, the more we can have a conversation, the more we can try to examine each other's differences and find a way to to eliminate those, you know, and uh, it's fine. Like, it's not an, an all or nothing thing. You know, we need to make change slowly and we need to push forward. If, if it's stagnant, then we haven't gotten anywhere. So, you know, right now is a very important time. Excuse me. Your vote counts no matter where you live in the world. Go to those websites. You can find out about about your people. Learn about those. Think about what you're buying. Uh, another big thing is toothpaste. You know, fluoride in toothpaste generally is not true fluoride. It's hydrofluorosilicic acid, uh, which is a runoff compound from phosphate mining that's so toxic 
that the companies aren't allowed to do anything with it. They're not even allowed to store it. So instead what they do is they send it to municipalities to become your fluoride in your water and they sell it to companies like Colgate to become fluoride in your toothpaste. So personally, I recommend for your own health to use a fluoride-free toothpaste if you can. Uh, I use charcoal activated, um, you know, but anyway, something to think about. Sherry says Mosaic, they are definitely one of the largest sellers of fluoride uh, around the world, actually. Um, and the fluoride has been pushed on everybody is a good idea. Like most things, in theory, it sounds fantastic until the, the actual results start coming through. And again, I would say that plastic toothbrush probably sounded good in theory until we found out where they went. Um, doing laundry at homes, fantastic in theory, except that all of our clothes contain microplastics. You know, uh, especially yoga pants and polyester. Terrible. Uh, PVC pipe. Let's replace lead with something that doesn't have toxins. Great in theory. Mistake in practicality. We do have toxins in them. They're actually one of the most toxic pieces of plastic available. And may I mention one of the most sold. So here we have another conundrum. Everybody's getting sick. Nobody knows why. Um, Ikea. You know, um, Ikea. Here we have another company. We don't think about all the destruction because we assume there's somebody out there there's an adult somewhere, and, and the problem is we've learned there's a cancer in the body politic. There, the adults that we thought were there protecting us or the world around us are not there, and we are those people, so it's, it's up to us. Uh, Matthew says, I use a uh, bricky water filter and fluoride filters. Fantastic. Yes, that's the way to go. That is, it's really important, guys. Home filtering is really important. Um, what, what I use personally, I like reverse osmosis. Uh, it's a difficult system, and when you install it in your regular uh, kitchen, it can sometimes take forever to fill up some water. Uh, it's fantastic, but look into filters. A lot of my friends in Florida need filters due to the multiple chemicals that are allowed by law to be leached into their water, air, and um and uh, soil systems. So, and they're under attack in many, many ways, and they know the most about these runoffs and are very, very familiar with uh, with really good water filters as well. And, um, and Matthew, yeah, that's smart smart to do. You know, it's really smart to do, Matthew. We, you know, again, our people out there that we always thought would be looking out for us are gone. So we really have to, to take care of ourselves. And it's gonna be easier to do that if you just simplify your life. You know, what are you eating? What are you drinking? What are you consuming? What are you buying? Uh, all these things, we now have this wonderful world where we have a handle, we can look at all of it. You know, you don't wanna Google every product you buy, just download Bicot. You don't even have to think, you just look at all the things that mean something to you, and Bicot will look at the UPC label and tell you if it, if it matches or violates your code of ethics. Um, you know, and we can all start to live that way. And I, I think in a sense, it's what the advertisers have always told us, that we're the thing that matters. And they've never really cared, but, you know, we're the th I mean, recently everybody told Coke to stop using plastic, and they said, nah, forget you guys. So, but what happened? Everybody went, yeah, right, and then went back to buying Coca-Cola. You know, we, we have to have some real resolve here. <laughs> you know? We can't be that easily deterred. Um, so, you know, we got to keep fighting. We got to keep telling these companies what we want. And they are not going to listen to our petitions. They could care less about our worries. They could care less about our health. All they care about is their bottom line. And the only thing we can do is destroy that through boycott, through other ways, you know, by other companies. If Coke loses money to another company that's only doing, you know, uh, glass bottles, they will make a change. We don't have to ask them. That's the beauty of it. We don't even have to ask them. Uh, Oh, yeah, Matthew, thanks, man. Thank you for being involved. It's it's really great. I love, Like I said, I love this show, and I love that we all get to hang out, talk about ways to create more of a no-toxic life, you know, uh, no-tox life in general. Um, for my friends that are vegans, I employ you to find ways to contact vegan food companies and say, please stop using plastics for our diet cheese, for our tofurkey, for our literally everything that we have to buy. As, as a vegan, I am so torn, uh, which mostly leaves me with just raw fruit and veg, which has its own world of things you have to consider between fair labor, 
Uh, pesticide use, um, you know, there's a lot going on, everybody. By the way, avocados, doesn't matter if they're organic or not, uh, all the pesticides sprayed on the outside do not get in due to the thickness of the skin. Just one thing. Avocados, buy them any way you like them. Uh, oh, Elena! Hey, it's nice to see Elena on here. Mulțumesc. That's my Romanian. That means thank you. And uh, it's just good to see you on here. I appreciate it, Elena. Um, and Elena's over in Romania as well. And um, like I said, Romania is incredible because they are fighting illegal logging in a very unique way. Uh, in the Amazon, unfortunately, most of the illegal logging that's being fought is being done through local tribes. But we have a problem where, I don't know, this is going to sound weird, but the tribes have been so remote and the few people that have had access to them keep it to themselves so that they can own that access. And as a result, there's a disconnect. So this tribe of 15 people, yeah, they got slaughtered by the guys that are that are out there that are loggers. What did you think would happen, you know? This to me seems like a very obvious problem with, you know, oh, we don't want to disturb them, we don't want to keep them away. You know, when I was in really remote villages, it was weird because you go in, there's no electricity, but people are wearing like Magnum PI t-shirts. And you're going, well, I don't even understand what this what this is, you know? Um, but that's just how it works out there. A lot of secondhand stuff makes it out there. So the Amazon, they've kind of rolled over and, and it's very sad and uh, nobody's fighting it, honestly. But at least in Romania and Canada, where um, in Canada is mostly being destroyed by Kirkland. So anybody that buys Costco, please remember, don't buy those toilet papers that we were talking about, the soft, Kirkland soft. Don't buy that. Make sure it's either recycled um, or has no bleaching either. So, you know, Costco is destroying the Canadian boreal forest. Ikea is destroying the Carpathian Mountains and two thirds of Europe's old forest growth. And the problem is, is we're all just, we're all complacent in this because we don't think about it because, you know, we, we're not allowed to know. So I hopefully today we got some good resources to you guys. I'll put some links down there for you. So you have great resources to always shop according to your own personal ethics, which is really the best thing that we can do if, if we're lucky enough to determine how our life is through a market, it's our responsibility to take that step. Was, uh, oh yeah, see Matthew, part of the reason I eat mostly raw. Yeah, me too, actually. Um, you know, it's one thing when I was traveling, I just couldn't find non-meat based things. I was in a lot of poor areas and in a lot of the poor areas are very meat dominated because it's, it's, it's what's accessible to pop, you know, most poverty. Um, stricken places and so there was nothing for me to eat <laughs> and so I just began eating only raw from the markets and I loved it it, it feels fantastic to your body and uh, Matthew it's the best way to go it, it can all be composted uh, unless it's an animal that nothing animal can be thrown into the compost but anything natural vegetation you know uh, tomato where things can be compostable uh, oh well, that's one last thing to talk about friends biodegradable Biodegradable is very touchy. Biodegradable means that a product can be pushed down to its most basic polymer under a certain set of pre-existing circumstances, meaning that to biodegrade, it has to be in a certain heat for a certain period of time. Now, most biodegradable things are recycled, and those things are done in basically these ovens that create this heat and pressure for this certain amount of time. It's not going to happen on the beach. So... If you have an option between a biodegradable and a compostable product, please buy compostable. That's all I could say about that. And uh, I have a lot of friends out there that have compost all the time, and uh, it's a beautiful thing. I think we should do a whole uh, episode on it. So if any of my friends out there are doing composting, hit me up. Let's talk about it some more, because I think it's a really neat thing. The more we all want to get into gardening, it could be the most helpful thing that we can do. Uh, hey, it's my Aunt Betsy. and Thanks for being on today. And, uh, happy and healthy. Uh, Corley says, strange, or maybe not. I tried posting about the Amazon forest many times, and apparently they don't want it shared. Interesting. I'm not surprised at all. Um, there's a lot of Facebook censorship on topics. And, you know, the more research I do, the more I find that these day-to-day -day products are can be traced back to these governmental policies that are allowing these multinationals to come in and destroy 
the resources. And the biggest problem is most of these resources are destroyed and the people that live there don't even get to share in it. For example, the people that live in Romania are not getting wealthy off of Ikea using all of their forest. It's actually the opposite. When I was in Jamaica, the one thing I could not get was Jamaican um, uh, mountain coffee. It's actually owned by the Japanese. And so they own all the mountains that the, the best coffee is, is grown on. So the famous Jamaican coffee you hear about, no one in Jamaica has it, right? Because what will happen is a multinational comes in, grabs the resource, takes it for their own, and then sends it out. For example, in Jamaica, the Japanese-owned plantations where they grow the coffee have all Japanese workers. Well, actually, a lot of local workers that they underpay. And then all the bosses, I mean, are Japanese. Then they take the, the product and then they just send it back to Japan where they can have this exotic Jamaican coffee. Same thing as if you buy it on Amazon. You think that you're buying and it's going back to the community, but it's not. We have to be really cautious. Um, just something to think about. So Corley brings up a great point. You know, a lot of these things are censored. A lot of these topics are very censored because in the end, when you question how business is being done, everyone just thinks that you're trying to destroy the way things are. But in fact, wouldn't it be a little bit more? Um, I think I think it's more investment uh, in your country if you try to look around and find ways to make it sustainable because you want it to last longer. You know, uh, obviously, here we are in the middle of a disaster, so we have to change things. Future. As Einstein said, you know, we can only change things. If we change the way we think, we can change the way we move forward. So I think we have a lot of, um, of great ideas, you know, that came out today. Um, again, contact lenses. If you don't need them, uh, please find a way to just use glasses instead. And if you're done with your glasses, go to a recycling program and, and keep them alive instead of letting them end up in a landfill or the water until we find a better solution. Very important. Um, it's a very, very important aspect. Uh, please stop buying like Velcro plastic wallets. Can't even tell you how many of those people find everywhere. Please stop buying plastic toothbrushes. I'm sorry, I know they give them for free at the dentist office and it's kitschy but destruction it's just destructive and most of those kitschy little free toothbrushes that are made of plastic also come in individually wrapped pieces of plastic um so it's just like a double whammy right there we don't live in an age where that's really helpful anymore and you know you might not think it helps but say to your dentist no thank you i would i don't want any plastic i always say to people i no thanks no plastic for me and they're like what you know, um, but it's important because if they hear that chorus of our voice, then our chorus rises up against all the white noise created by all the PR companies to keep us guessing at how we're destroying things and allow us to just make us think that our choices don't go past our homes, but they do. Our choices reach around the world. And we are very important members of the world, each and every one of us. This is why revolution through routine means everything, I think. Um, so, yeah, we have, um, uh-oh, since Coralie's put that comment up, every, nothing's come up. I'm worried that we're going to get censored now. So, friends, please put up more links. I would love to hear more of this discussion. Remember that we are the reason that the world does what it does. We are the bad guys, but we are the good guys. Some people say we're the virus. I totally disagree. We're not the virus. We're not the reason that the earth is being destroyed. We are the only things that can stop it. And that's what we need to focus on. Don't look at everybody as a potential enemy that's destroying the universe. Look at everybody as a potential ally that can help you save the universe. And they may not, you know, click in on this topic, but always don't be afraid to bring it back up. They may think that you're just being an idiot because you talk about reusable grocery store bags. That people have politicized plastic straws. You know, I'm sorry. I don't, you know, I don't care what my politician says. You can't tell me that a plastic straw is good for anything. It just doesn't matter. You know, we need to stop regurgitating. It's important, you know. Uh, all the plastic uh, in online sale shipments. Oh, my gosh. Mail the plastic back. I love that, Doralee. Coralie, that's awesome. I love that. All the plastic. In online sales shipments, mail that plastic back. Wouldn't that be great? Companies would be like, what? You know, you open it up and you get like 900 pieces of, 
of bubbly wrap and then in the middle is a thing this big and the box was this big it's absurd the amount of plastic you used a lot of people have asked me are you going to make conservation conversation t-shirts um you know or anything like that and the problem is is the uh bio, the eco footprint <clears throat> of shipping to all the places people are asking for these uh, I feel would just be, and, and these companies won't not use plastic for me. So I've been talking to companies that I can find that have eco-friendly kits and eco-friendly things um, to make sure that everything's wrapped properly or in, in compostable products. And at the moment, it's still pretty impossible. So I haven't found anything where I'm comfortable sharing it uh, on an eco level. So it's the reason, you know, I'm not in this for money. Obviously, you know, this is something that I do because I love it and I love talking to you guys. It's it's my uh, it's my chance every week to talk about what's happening in our world and learn from you guys the same. You know, it really is a conversation. So I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, Matthew says, going back to furniture, I have an oh avocado brand mattress. That, that is so awesome. Matthew, how do you like the avocado mattress? I have heard, okay, so avocado pits are being used to carve out um, silverware. I personally use wooden, I don't use silverware as it's called, uh, because of my chemo treatments, the tape, I have metal all the time. So anything that's metal tastes worse. Unfortunately, this one even is really difficult, but at the moment I don't have any other options. Um, so what I do, is I use uh, wooden spoons and forks, which was a, a tip given to me by another friend that has been through cancer and been through chemo. And the tip is brilliant. And any of my friends or any of your family that's suffering through chemo and has that, oh, I nauseous and metal taste, use, pla um, don't use plastic, I'm sorry, use wooden. They're incredible. Wooden or bamboo um, are the best. And they have avocado. Uh, Matthew says, my wife and I love it. That's awesome. Matthew, that is, I think, truly an amazing revolution. I've been so excited to find out about those because I've been waiting to hear from somebody that's that's used that. I mean, avocado pits, we use so many over here. There, It is such a, a thrown away resource that could be going to so much good use. And I absolutely love that. I mean, avocado is one of the best foods uh, for you anyway. Um, so we, that, what a beautiful way to re reuse that. And like I said, they're, they're making, um, you know, forks and spoons and knives out of it, which I highly recommend. I use one made out of sustainable bamboo, but you can also get avocado, which is another amazing, fantastic, um, reusable resource. And yeah, avocado mattresses. If you guys haven't seen the ads for these, Google it. It's so cool. And uh, I think it's a great way to go. Mattresses. You know what? Great point. Matthew, something that we didn't really bring up. There is a lot of problems in the standardized mattress uh, from the way that the glue is put together with it to the forever springs inside to all of the stuffing that is generally toxic. And what do you do when you're done with a mattress? You know, like that, that recycles the best it can, but eventually it ends up in the landfill. And eventually, you know, some of the birds are going to accidentally eat the stuff inside of it and then they're going to take that and then, and then we get into that biomagnification again of of people you know then eating the birds and then the whole thing so it all comes back to what we put out what we bring back in um you know uh i i got this quote once that i really loved um that came from carlos santana and he said your output is your input so what you give to the world is what you take back in and it's what you become so um you know in many ways it all starts with us you know look we're not going to change the world by just turning off our lights in our rooms the those those are the old things from the 80s like you know um making us feel that it was our abuse of of the electric and our abuse of litter that caused it and that's bs you know, um, that was the companies trying to put all the blame on us when, in fact, they're the reason that we have these problems. And in fact, we are the ways that we can solve it. So, you know, how do we make a change? We buy the things that force the companies to change over time. We do petitions. We continue to share articles, continue, which for the most part is never environmental. The best part about most environmental news is it's never political because both sides of politics screw up the environment so badly that 
for the most part, it comes to this third party group like us to talk about it. You know, it's good. I mean, it doesn't have a place in politics. Um, aside from listening to recently some politicians um, talking about the right to clean water for everybody, I haven't heard any politicians since that politician left. I haven't heard any politicians mention it since then. Um, no politicians think you have the right to clean water, and that's messed up. So anyway, everybody, you know what? It's okay because we're in a new time where we know what we've got. We know the limitations of the people that can help us, and we have to find a way to make them help us. Uh, and I always bring this group up. If you go to fightforzero.org, fightforzero.org, F-I-G-H-T, four number, Z-E-R-O.org, is a wonderful example of how a group of people can make a change. What they did was to track all of the medical issues that people were having in local communities in Florida, put together that data, go to Tallahassee, and meet with the lawmakers who normally wouldn't spend a minute even thinking about it, who'd never heard, heard of a PFA or a forever chemical, and ask them to change legislation. My friends like Wilson McCourtney, Stephanie Brendel, Shark Alliance, they fought and fought and fought and worked with politicians in order to get the shark finning bill changed in Florida. So our politicians are not our enemies, but we have to understand them and we have to understand how to manipulate them. And the best way we can do that is to see who owns them and to see what they're doing and then to bring them something they can take to their people and say, we do need to make this change. So we're all part of the solution. And I love that, you know, uh, this is very exciting. It's a very exciting time. We have a, a changeover in everybody's mind. So I want to thank everybody for being out here on the show today. And I wanted to bring it up with, let's look at an example outside of our immediate area. And this is Sudan. Now, most of the world thinks of Sudan and, you know, you think of uh, war and poverty and all these issues. But Sudan is actually very, very innovative. And now, if you want to know why the world kind of always cracks on Sudan. Sudan's the first company that stood up to the oil and gas industries by banning all plastic bags in 2015. They actually shut down all their plastic factories too. They do not allow the sale or manufacturing of plastic. And ever since then, all you've heard about Sudan is pretty um, condescending throwing it out there but recently and this is like a few days ago these four kids these four teenagers invented a robot to clean the world's oceans of the 8.3 billion pounds of plastic pollution now that is beautiful and this is what we're talking about new minds fresh approaches and the reason that these kids have this fresh approach is that for the last five years the idea of plastic being a necessity has been removed from their paradigm of conversation. Um, we're always talking about how to change the plastics. That's our paradigm of conversation. Think about that. The paradigm says, how do we change the plastics? It doesn't say, like these kids are thinking, how do we get rid of these plastics? So think about that paradigm of what we're allowed to talk about and how controlled is our conversation. How controlled is our conversation? These kids had a differently controlled conversation that led to an amazing solution. So if we can change the nature and the parameters of our conversation, we can open up new possibilities we've never even thought of instead of just recycling the same old ideas like these kids have taught us. Um, now I wanted to go over a couple other countries that have banned disposable plastic bags, include Italy, China, Bangladesh, many, many of the African countries, including Rwanda, Kenya, Congo, and South Africa. And that's another thing. Africa is one of the absolute leaders in the removal of, tr of plastic waste. Very impressive, a lot of good stories over there. There's actually one of my favorite stories, I know we're running a little late today, this is just one of my favorite topics. One of my favorite stories, I took a class uh, from the UN to get certified in plastic waste management and pollution, right? So one of the things we learned about that absolutely was incredible to me was a recycling program um, I believe it was in Kenya, where they took this plastic pollution into a local plastic company. And there are, you can go look open source recycling and you can find how to invent your own neighborhood recycling. You don't even need a company or somebody to take care of it for you. So this, this community decided we are going to recycle our own plastic. And what they did 
was they then uh, turned all that plastic into book bags. And then um, they bought little solar panels. And they put these solar panels inside of these book bags with a light. So the kids wore the book bags around all day at school. And in a lot of their villages at nighttime, when they turned off the generator and the electricity stopped, the kids still had solar power and could turn on their light and continue their homework. So I think that is solving like 700 problems at once. And that is innovative thinking. And that's the exciting part is we have a new generation up and coming. We have a new way of thinking. We're all part of this next wave of thinking. It's very, very exciting. We're all part of the same army for a better future. You know, so revolution through routine. Uh, it's something that we all do, I think, already anyway. And I'm glad that we got to talk about different options and ways that we can make our changes at home. So it was really great to see everybody again. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day out there. I just want to leave you with a couple simple tips and then we're going to head out. Four alternatives. Uh, one reusable bag will save 783 plastic bags. One reusable bottle will save 83 plastic bottles. And as we know, those are mostly the scourge of the entire world. I even saw a plastic bottle in the middle of the Amazon, in the middle of a lagoon, where I didn't even see people for four days. Uh, one reusable cup for your coffee replaces 1,256 plastic cups. That's insane. Especially when you think about right now, they're not letting you use that. Um, like he was saying up in New York. So imagine now they're saying, all right, everybody, we're just now going to expand uh, every single person. Now they're going to go trash 1,200 cups. Uh, one reusable straw, like my bamboo straw, will replace about 300 plastic straws, which in turn will save thousands and thousands of animals. So, uh, Michelle, thanks for being on here. Thank you, everybody, for being part of it. I really appreciate everybody. Uh, Camilla says, love uh, to support those people who uh, make those bags. Is there a way? You know what, Camilla? I will, I just thought of it off the top of my head. Let me, I will find a link and I'll put it on the end of this. Uh, I'll, I'll put it back on here so you guys can check it out and find a way to support them. Very innovative program. Very, very impressive. Um, and I can't wait to share it with you guys because I, I really, it's, it's one of the best stories I've ever read. So um, thank you guys all for being here. Matthew, I appreciate all the input. It's great to know about the avocado mattress. Super cool. Everybody check out avocado made uh, utensils. You don't have to have silver made utensils anymore. Uh, anyway, it's great to see you guys today. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, Camilla, Michelle. Corley, always great to see you on here. Uh, Bruce, all my all my uh, all my eco family, uh, Heather, everybody. It's really nice to see you guys today. Thanks for joining, and I can't wait to see you next week for more of the conservation conversation. And remember, always in any moment, you get an opportunity where people start to complain, or you're gonna you get in a moment where normally people are polarized, and you can argue. Don't argue. It's a moment to open a conversation no matter how opposing your views are and if you can stay calm and you stay simple in your mindset and stay to pry in and change somebody's mind and open their mind at least to the way that we see things so remember revolution through routine it's the conservation conversation it's our world let's talk about it all right everybody have a great weekend see you soon